Good afternoon, fabulous hardware community, and welcome back to Denver, Colorado. We're here on day three of Supercomputing 2023. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host and analyst, David Nicholson. David, how are you feeling? End of day three, still feels like the energy level's up. Is your energy level up? Doesn't feel like the end of the day to me. Feels great, yeah, That's feels great. <laughs> I'm very excited about our next guest, so yeah. I am very excited about our next guest. Please welcome Happy to the show. Happy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You came all the way from South Africa, yeah? Yes, um, 17 hour flight plus five uh, to get here with some layover, so it's a long trip. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. that is a commitment to participate <laughs> in the community. We appreciate that. You would never know looking at you that you traveled that far. Are, are you off by 10 hours, 11 hours? How, how? Yeah, yeah, off uh, by 10 hours. Yeah, okay. So South Africa is 10 hours ahead of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so we'll be gentle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Casual yeah. 2 a.m. broadcast for you, no big deal. We'll just, yeah. we'll just turn up the lights. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you work for the National Integrated Cyber Infrastructure Center, correct? Can you tell us what you guys do? Yeah, look, the National Integrated Cyber Infrastructure, it's um, a government funded um, entity, uh, funded of course by the South African government. And this is to ensure that um, we can provide cyber infrastructure um, services and of course uh, infrastructure to the research community in South Africa. Yeah. That will be your high performance computing. Uh, make sure that uh, we have got uh, also the broadband connectivity. So this will be equivalent to what you have as internet too here in the US. Yeah. But uh, the other third component which is quite important within the cyber infrastructure is the data management. What do you do with the data? How do people move the data? So that's what we do. And um, uh, to some extent, we provide those services uh, to um, our industry also to make sure that we can get our industry to be competitive. But uh, we extend these services also to other parts of uh, Africa to build capacity in Africa. So yeah, that's what we do. It's it's awesome. You mentioned to me earlier that you were the only center in the continent, correct? You're the only center doing this in Africa? That is correct, and um, we started with uh, this um, in 2007. So you nice. could imagine before 2007, there were no supercomputers in the, the continent. So we started off with um, wow. uh, a system, 2.5 teraflops in that time in two, 2007. If you look in the uh, the top 500 CAF in 2007, 2.5 teraflops was not really that uh, significant, but very important for Africa. That's where we started. Today we are at like a, a capacity of 1.6 uh, petaflops and we're growing. Woo! Yeah. That is quite the journey and, and in not a very long time. You also mentioned, and I thought this was a great point I want to bring up, you're our first government guest, also our first African guest on the show for Supercomputing 23. Governments need a lot of evidence to make an investment in HPC. What was this journey like for you guys? Look, uh, uh, it's not an easy thing to convince no. uh, the government to put money into what they could see as like, I mean, toys mm -hmm. um, for scientists. So the first thing is to look at uh, what can you be able to solve in terms of tangible things in the country. Yeah. So we started off from there with uh, some seed funding and, and looking at that uh, uh, in South Africa, we looked at what are some of the strategic initiatives in the country? What are the pain points? Mm -hmm. And can we be able to take those pain points and use high performance computing to accelerate them? So that, that's where the journey started. And, and, and yeah. looking at that, for an example, we look at challenges like climate change and look at it and say, can we be able to contribute in that? Some, some of the things is uh, uh, industry competitiveness. Can we be able to accelerate some of the industries? But, yeah. but more important to make sure that uh, uh, the research outputs can be competitive. So that's why we started and demonstrated that with now a little bit of investment, we can have some uh, production, and then from there, then the government has this long-term investment. So yeah. it's important to talk to your stakeholders' needs 
and demonstrate that you can contribute to that. Yeah, and get that, that most affordable, I hate using the term cheap in our industry because it's very expensive to do anything, but that most affordable proof of concept over the line to continue to get the funding. Tell us a little bit about some of the projects. We talked, there's a lot of research being done. I know there's some very exciting astronomy projects that you're leading. Look, um, uh, by the time when we started investing in high performance computing, we were at a stage where South Africa wanted to convince the world that uh, they will be the right host uh, for such big radio astronomy yeah. project. So at that time, um, there, were, there was uh, Australia and South Africa competing to host this. So apart from saying we are geographically uh, situated uh, and we have got that uh, geographical competitive advantage to hold such a project. One of the things is uh, for such project, you will be producing a lot of data. You need to be able to share it yeah. with the rest of the world. You need to show that you have got uh, the right uh, tools, which are cyber <coughs> infrastructure tools uh, for that. So um, in 2007, we focused a lot in that to push that case. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, that has been announced. It's now, we're already starting with uh, the first phase of uh, that astronomy project because we demonstrated that we can do it. We have got the computing facilities. We can yeah. draw them. We've got the capabilities. And that, that, that is very important. And um, uh, we will yeah. be getting the first phase of, I mean, the, the second phase uh, in 2025. Um, of uh, the SKA uh, project. Exciting. Mm -hmm. So what have you seen, uh, d d did you attend Supercompute uh, last year by any chance? Uh, last year I did not attend, okay. but uh, I have been following up on the news on that. Uh, you remember that uh, 2019 was uh, the last um, uh, physical event. Yes. And then things quite off and then so last year, I could not attend because I did not update my visa. But uh, fortunately ah. now, um, yeah, at some point my passport expired and I wasn't aware because there was no travel. I, I, I have, yeah, so, I have been, I've been in the same circumstance. Yeah, 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 so <laughs> I lost that. Different but, travel. But I was looking at the technological advancements, yeah. uh, things start moving, and I think at that time, that's when, um, uh, you know, things like AI, HPC yes, turning yes, into yes, AI, this is the question, that yes. gaining traction, you know, things like uh, quantum computing now being seriously, uh, not just being on the sidelines, but uh, getting into the mainstream of our discussion so of true. HPC. Yeah, so, so. So, do you, so do you feel that that makes it potentially easier to get that attention and funding on projects like this because it is sort of in the in the forefront you know government officials who are in the process of of uh, making decisions about how money is you know how that money is allocated if they've experienced something like as simple as chat gpt then at least they've got a sense of ai and if you're talking about supporting ai with what you're doing does that is that helpful look one or of does the, it confuse the issue look one of the things that you have to look at is that um, in uh, the adoption of uh, your generative AI, we were just coming out of the COVID-19. One thing that was there was, everybody started now being interested in the data and the data analytics. And, and so generative AI came in at the right time because people started looking at the importance of high performance computing in um, the, the, the data analytics. So it was no longer just for you know, your, your big science projects are for engineers and scientists. Even yeah. my grandmother now could follow HPC, understand that it is important for a lot of data to be processed, to be making decisions. So, I so it is at that time that everybody's that convinced that, uh, look, we need to invest in this. So, so I think it has made its case and everybody is backing on uh, these developments. Of course, the challenge is always to for us, you know, traditional HPC to say, are we being left out now on the sidelines and is this, uh, everything is going to be just focusing on this generative AI? 
They, yeah. they, they actually so make, much FOMO right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. You can actually get a rubber stamp of the letters A and I, and you can you can add them to all of the things that you've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh no, no it's, a, it's, 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 it's AI now. It's AI yeah. now. Yeah, Certainly, yeah. everyone trying to claim that for sure. Yeah. 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 We, we we were we were also talking earlier um, about about this this idea that uh, we generally accept that technological improvements are going to deliver universal advantages to humanity. You mentioned that you are unique in the entire African continent. Um, how, do you, how do you look at the way that these technologies can be leveraged to help more than just the scientists that are working on the, pro on, on the projects themselves? Is that, a, is, that a, is that kind of a directive uh, guidance from the government that this meet? We, we talk about democratization of this. Um, I think in my mind what it means is um, the ability to leverage these tools in a way where more people take advantage, or, or you know, more people gain advantages from them. How, how is that looked at? Or is this purely scientific research and that's, that's for policy makers? No, no look, it's, uh, it's important. First thing is that uh, you, you should understand for governments to invest in this. Governments have got a short lifespan, right? Uh, uh, in the US, how long do they stay? Four years. In South Africa, it's five years. So whatever that I have to convince them, I have to make sure that in five years they can see success. Because uh, they need to invest in something that can make, also make them look good. Make that story look so, good, so, yeah. So, so it's important to understand what are the pain points. So, um, uh, uh, HPC, generative AI has to answer those things, has to try and improve uh, humanity and uh, remove the challenges that people have. So that, that's the only thing that will make us successful. And um, it has to be able to talk to that. But the other thing, you're looking at the whole thing about, as the technology advances, um, are we leaving the community away? So. When you talk about democratization, it's, uh, we should not be leaving part of the society out of there. So in terms of skilling up people, uh, um, AI for an example now, uh, in most part, um, I think in the US they will be having those challenges to say, is it going to take up our jobs? Yeah, Am I absolutely. going to? So, so looking at that is how do we bring in people to make sure that we can reskill them from where they are uh, to follow where now the technology is going so that, that they're not left behind. So we've got a lot of work to do to make sure that uh, we can answer those questions. You have such, I mean, you, you play a really important role. I know that <clears throat> education is core to your being. You were actually the educator of the year in the internal audit community last year, which is very exciting about that. And you're all about accelerating discoveries in Africa. I'm assuming you see quite a variety of different projects. Tell us about some of the projects that excite you, both from the student level all the way up to enterprise that you get to engage with. Look, uh, the, the story here for me, and when I looked at HPC, is that um, if you look at a lot of people who are in the HPC space, we got in there because we had a problem to solve. Um, this was not taught anywhere in universities. So right. a lot of people, um, uh, it was self-taught, and there were no any sort of courses yeah. in any curriculum. So like for an example, yeah. I'm not a computer scientist. I am a physicist, and I had a, a physics or uh, material science problem to solve, and I needed computer, so I taught myself Linux and all this thing. So Casually. It, 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 yes, so it is that point where now we're working on how do we make sure that this is integrated in the curriculum right from the beginning? And one of the big projects that uh, is going on uh, around the world is uh, getting students to be able to understand high performance computing at undergraduate level. Mm -hmm. Not only to start looking at it at postgraduate when you're doing your research. And things like your student cluster challenge, it's one of the projects, even at here at SC you'll see the students yeah. Well, we're building this, I mean, from undergraduate level. So we've got that program in South Africa. We started it in 2013, and um, of course, uh, with support of uh, some of the OEMs and other centers here in the US. And I can tell you, we took students who couldn't even spell HPC. But um, those students uh, managed to go in, um, be able to build uh, a cluster, a small cluster, 
and they competed with the rest of the world. And we had South Africa competing quite well, um, winning gold at the international supercomputing uh, for a number of years. So this is, has been a sustained um, uh, intervention to make sure that we can upskill these kids from uh, undergraduate. Of course, we're not just looking at computing. We're also now looking at uh, for data analytics and the live cyber security. So it's building those skills. Uh, what do you think it means for the younger community or folks just learning about the space? To your point, you're taking in students who can't spell HPC. What do you think it means for them to see you on this stage, to see South Africa playing in the big leagues, winning, and, and, and on that global scale? Do you think that's a great catalyst for the next generation of technologists? We have to really make sure that um, uh, they can see the future in this. Because, you know, the, the kids today, they look at uh, what is cool? That's the name, the word that they use. Is this cool? Am, am, I yeah. going to be, am I going to have a successful career in this? So we need to be able to demonstrate that and uh, show them that uh, it's important to invest in that. They have to follow it. So we have got a big task. And today there are so many careers uh, that uh, people don't have to uh, work a lot in terms of you know, science and engineering. Yeah. So there's a lot of competition to be able to, to do that. So we have to show that um, these things are, are important. And, and you know, something like generative AI, it's almost everybody wants to say, I want to be able to do programming, I need to understand HPC. So it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, advertisement for, for skills development. Well, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say I think you're cool, Happy. I think HPC is very cool, and I'm excited to see more cool projects coming out of the center. David, I know that you think HPC is cool as well. Thank you both for being here on this segment with me, and thank all of you for tuning in to learn more about the exciting projects and research going on on the continent of Africa. My name's Savannah Peterson, coming to you live here from Denver at Supercomputing 2023. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.